So this is going to be a whirlwind tour of all the various outreach and learning uh, opportunities that you have uh, available through in common about not only in common services like the Federation certificate service and Eduroam, but also of good identity and access management practices and the trusted access platform. So if you remember, uh, this is a little chart that I put up on Monday, which seems like decades ago, at least it does to me. Um, and so you're at uh, the, the first question, right? Will it work for me? Um, and getting a sense of what this is all about. And my guess is, you know, if you remember those slides, um, there was one analogy of driving through the rain um, and having all this rain on your windshield and no wipers. And hopefully that's a little bit clearer. What usually happened to me when I was just learning about this stuff is parts of it become a lot clearer and then other things, the picture gets bigger, right? And the edges of that picture get kind of fuzzy. Um, but you start broadening your perspective, you, but certain things, certain connections are made. So I think the next steps, I'm going to talk through the options for, for each of these is how can I learn more about those details and put more specifics into that picture? And then if it's right for you, how can I get started? Um, how can I uh, leverage support? How can I get support from the community and kind of help uh, move my project forward? And then what are others doing? What are other practitioners doing? You heard from a number of them uh, during base camp this week, um, but there are a num quite a few, lots of folks out there and the TechX meeting in December is really, you might think of it as like a user group meeting um, and it's international in scope. And then finally, how can I influence the work? Not only is community driving uh, the adoption, but it's also driving right the changes and evolution of how all this stuff works together and how do we make um, the uh, platform that is uh, in common federation, software identity and access management work better for research and education. So um, Aaron did this lovely petals flower thing. I'm going to go through each one quickly, base camp starting with Basecamp. So I don't need to talk about this slide. You can probably actually speak to it much better than I can and each of you with your own perspective. So I'm going to move on. The next, um, uh, I guess, connection uh, this, week, this, this uh, year that's similar to Basecamp uh, in a way is technology exchange that I talked about earlier. Um, it is going to be held in Denver, as I mentioned, uh, in December, and it's open to everyone. Just because it's an Internet 2 meeting doesn't mean you have to be an Internet 2 member to come to it. Um, there are five tracks that I've listed there. You'll see uh, once the program goes up, there's an identity and access management track, which we call Camp Week. The idea of camp actually has been uh, with us for a long, long time. We started our first identity and access management camp in 2001, it's a long time ago. Um, and so we have kept that brand throughout the entire tenure of our outreach um, for the last 20 years, in part to provide um, continuity so folks kind of know what's going on, but so that you're um, also kind of have a, um, can be rest assured that it's driven by the community. So this is, it starts out, this, the camp week um, and the identity access management tracks start out with, with the refeds meeting. So if you want to know all about refeds, there's actually one uh, starting before TechX starts and you can sign up for that. Um, the, and then we go into presentations, curated presentations, uh, that our community program uh, chooses from a selection of call for proposals. Uh, and then the last two days are a really um, wonderful uh, discussion session called, um, well, it's advanced camp, but it's really a, uh, gosh, I'm trying to, I'm at a loss for words. It's an unconference and we build the agendas right on site. A lot of times those agendas are, driven by the earlier presentations. How do we solve this particular problem? But sometimes there, I just want to know about X and gosh, Chris Heiser's here. So Chris, can you join? 
me in a room with, you know, maybe 10 or 12 other folks that are interested in the same thing and help us understand how to do X. So it's really runs the gamut between, you know, whatever you want to know that's, you know, from beginning to super advanced, like, you know, how do we uh, interop a little better with respect to Federation metadata globally. So going on to the software training, uh, we uh, this is all on the website. We have software training for each of the trusted access components. Um, I will be showing a, a schedule shortly that is for a fee, but we will also have no charge uh, virtual offerings coming uh, to uh, email box and Slack box, is that a Slack box, Slack channel near you. And we'll let you know what you can sign up for, but we're we're rolling out uh, service related training in addition to the DevOps that I think was talked about earlier and identity and access 101. So if there are folks that you know that would like to kind of learn more about or hear Tom Jordan's presentation, for instance, they'll be able to, anyone will be able to sign up and, and get that, which will be super helpful. Here's the uh, schedule, like I mentioned before. <clears throat> Again, this is all out on the web. Um, I think our next session is excuse me, co-manage, <coughs> excuse me, at the end of this month. And it goes all the way to December with our second Shibboleth uh, training for the summer fall. So, um, excuse me. If you can't wait until TechX and you want to hear about what other folks are doing, we have a YouTube channel um, that has all of the IM online uh, for the last several years out there. And they range from right the NIH requirements to, hey, what's new in HECVAT 3.0 for identity? That has changed. If you haven't, if you're into HECVAT and you didn't know there's new identity requirements for that, go check it out. The, the Incoma Technical Advisory Committee did an awesome job um, adding some uh, um, requirements for identity into the HECVAT. Um, there's also information about research and supporting research passwordless authentication and so forth. It's a credible rich array of, um, of topics. We will be hosting, I, I believe our next I am online in July and you'll hear more about that. It's actually going to be um, passwordless off again. So stay tuned for that one. If you're interested in influence and work, we would love, love, love to have you participate. Drive the bus with us. Um, we always do a call for uh, participation in the fall for our leadership and advisory committees. Nominate yourself, nominate someone else. It's all good. Um, we're always looking for folks who are enthusiastic, interested. You don't have to know all about how all this stuff works, but if you're really um, passionate about Edgeroom, go for it. The Edgeroom Advisory Committee would love to have you. So uh, think about it as you're, you're going through your day. So I want to talk a little bit about the Collaboration Success Program because that is what is up next in our um, kind of our schedule in addition to the training. Collaboration Success Program is really a place where you can um, bring your project plans for identity and access management and make progress on them. I think what a lot of times happens is things get overtaken by events. You need help. You come to roadblocks. How do, you, how do you make progress through those things? And so this brings together subject matter experts and a number of different features on how the cohort program is run that kind of helps drive you uh, through your, your project. And here are some really great um, quotes from folks who have gone before you uh, in this program. But I really like, but like going to the gym, you're better off for participating and never sorry you went. So you kind of think damning for faint praise, but you know, having focus and rigor, that's super important and that's really hard to get and the CSP helps you with that. So it's really, it's the right help when you need it. It helps you fill the gaps between plan and reality. So it's, it's not uncommon, right? You're starting a plan and you're, you're starting to work through an idea and you hit a roadblock or you hit something that you're not surprised, or that you're surprised about, all those unknown unknowns. Hey, wow, our DevOps environment isn't to the level that we might need. Hmm, what can we do about that? Well, we can probably help with that. 
it can help provide focus um, because we have weekly and bi-weekly and sometimes monthly, depending on the audience, report outs. Uh, we ask for your project plans to be presented, things like that. That being accountable to the community really helps drive your team's focus um, towards uh, getting, getting results. I think it's also super intensive applied learning. You can go through the training. Every uh, team gets eight seats uh, to slice and dice and, and however they'd like and attend whatever software uh, training makes sense for them. But then there's also side meetings on DevOps to cloud or on-prem, things like that, that, that are further in-depth training on actual implementation pieces. Um, I think it removes roadblocks, as I mentioned before. Right now, if you get stuck, you're alone. In CSP, you got peeps. There's a lot of, lot of value to that. Building teams, that gives them the understanding and confidence to move forward on their plans. Um, helps with professional development. Um, and folks come back with broader uh, actual um, perspective. Um, lots of personal connections that they can draw in the future and help your team move forward in the future. So, um, oh, you'll meet new friends and you'll be in good company. These are all the alumni schools that have uh, gone through the CSP, some of them twice. Uh, so that's a great testament to the program. This is just a a, a quick overview of all the various services and, and opportunities through the Collaboration Success Program. You'll see the project planning deep dives, virtual workshops. Um, you'll get access to Basecamp for longer, so the recorded um, access for uh, the entire time. You'll get your own workbench in the, in the cloud to be able to play with how all the trusted access platform components fit together. Um, lots of opportunity here. We'll be uh, announcing the schedule for 2022 later this year. So here are three um, uh, CSP participants that have already signed up for the class of 2023. So they'll be, if you decide to join us, they will be three of your peeps um, for the coming uh, cohort. You wanna learn more, you can check out the website. Um, if you're interested, send us, uh, fill out a, a brief questionnaire and we'll give you a call and we'll chat with you about what you wanna do, what the program offers and how it might be able to help. And then you can think about it and decide. Um, and if you're interested, we'll send you a link and you can sign up. So with that, it's a lightning talk. There's no time for niceties and summaries and all that good stuff. Any questions? And I have my CSP shirt on. See my CSP shirt? You'll get t-shirt too, swag. It's worth it, the swag alone, right? Right. All right, back to you, Mike. All right, and they're the tri-blend t-shirts too, so they're super soft. Yeah, really. Uh, nice. All right, thank you.